Assalamu alaikum, dear colleagues. I'm Dr. Huma Sheikh, one of the mentor of MRCOG ASCII Prep. And today I want to discuss with, uh, with you a very important topic, which is equally important for face-to-face -face candidate as well as for the online candidate. That is the term breach management. This task, it has appeared for the global online exam as well as the face-to-face -face exam. And this, uh, the, in both ways, either it comes as a face-to-face -face or online exam, you will be provided either with the mannequin or in the online you will be given uh, with the pictures and you have to discuss and describe all the things which are related to the module or to this task specially. So uh, either you are appearing for the face-to-face -face or you are appearing for the online exam. Most of the time preparations are same. I, it, it, only the thing matters is this, if, it's, if you are present physically, you have to show the physically how to demonstrate the different maneuvers, how to conduct a preach delivery. Otherwise, in the face-to-face -face exam, they can show you pictures and as well as the maneuvers pictures, and they can ask you to discuss them. So you have to be prepared for each and everything accordingly. For both exams, it's essential that you should know the skills and the drills. So this term breach, I'm going to discuss uh, it in a teaching uh, manner. However, it can come as a structured as well as the role play task as well. Let's start with our task. This is a simulated patient task and your junior, Sister Yvonne Rebecca has come to see you. She wants to discuss about the breach birth, how to counsel the patient at different options if she comes into labor because she has seen a previous, uh, yesterday, a breach birth delivery. The patient was grabbed at two with breach presentation at five centimeter dilatation. Her previous birth was also a vaginal breach delivery, which was successfully managed. You will be discussed and you will be tested in communication with your colleague, patient safety, applied clinical knowledge, and you have to teach your junior and apply to her questions. Always remember, in the teaching task, you are not a doctor and she is a not player. You are equally uh, properly placed colleagues and you have to show equal respect and love and affection to your junior. So you have will really introducing yourself by your name, not by your uh, saying that I'm a doctor. You will just introduce yourself that I am uh, like I am Sarah and you are Rebecca. So you will confirm a name and identity. You have to confirm what is the background agenda of the trainee. Is there any underlying a hidden agenda which is working, whether she's being bullied or she's being humiliated related by some seniors or what is the specific reason but she wants to discuss about this topic. Uh, you have to, uh, you know, uh, rule out the hidden agenda. Otherwise, teaching your juniors and your trainee, it's a, a very common practice in NHS and every part of the world, you have to do some teaching to your juniors because this is a process of uh, giving your knowledge and gaining uh, information and gaining respect from your juniors. So let's start our questions. Uh, first of all, uh, in, along with this station, you will be provided with the mannequin and you will be given a doll and a tummy uh, of the pelvis and they might have uh, placed the baby in a breech position and they can ask you what is this uh, position and how to conduct a delivery. What is a assisted vaginal breech birth? What is a physiological birth? And what are the different maneuvers if there is as any, if need arises? So you should be very much clear about that. And you have to answer all the questions which are going to be asked by your colleague. Along with the applied clinical knowledge, when you are discussing the breach part, you are covering the safety points as well, because you're going to give her what are the uh, precautionary measures, what are the contraindications, what are the side effects, what are the teams which should be present there, and what are the monitoring methods, uh, what, what is the indications, what are the contraindications for general breach birth? In this way, you are being tested for the safety as well. So be careful while you are discussing things. You should know each and everything. Uh, let's start our task. First of all, you have to build a proper, uh, friendly communication with your colleague. Uh, it should be a, a very friendly manner so that the junior will be comfortable with you. If there is any hidden agenda, she will be comfortable enough to discuss her concerns and discuss her questions with you. And you should be able to answer her concerns. And at the each uh, a step, you are going to uh, confirm her understanding, whether she is understanding your point, and you would ask her to repeat the maneuvers on the steps along with you. 
so that you can know that she is understanding and you are going to invite questions from her and you are going to ask her if there's any time she don't understand, she can stop you and you can repeat the things for her. It will give her more confidence and she will be more comfortable with you. At the end of the session, you are going to get a feedback from your colleague that how this teaching station went well or not. And you're going to provide her with the educational material, the videos, the strategies, as well as the guidelines so that she can go back and learn and she can, uh, and you're going to invite her as well. Whenever time arises, there is it's any breach, but you can ask her to come over and accompany you and know more and learn more. So in this way, uh, she will be more satisfied and she will be more than happy to have a teaching session with her senior colleague and she would give a good words for you. So let's start this. We're going to do introduction and setting agenda. Hi, I'm Sara, ST5, and you are. Nice to meet you, Rebecca. Welcome to the department. When did you join? How do you find colleagues' environment? Good to know that you're happy. It's good. You want to learn and improve your skills. Appreciate her uh, eagerness for knowing. It's going to boost her confidence. You have to unroll out the underlying agenda, any underlying pulling and reminding you by asking her, uh, may I, you are interested to know breach library? May I know if there is any particular reason for that? Anything you want to share or anybody bothering you, I'm happy to assist you by all means because we have Workforce Behavioral Management Committee and if anything arises, you are going to support your trainee and you are going to discuss the uh, unrolling and undermining in any proper way. There's going to be another session for that. So the questions which can be asked by your junior that she wants, she will be more interested to learn about the breach, what are the types of breach, causes and risk factors, and what are the gundi indications for the dynal breach birth? What are the options available for breach and labor general and how to conduct assisted vaginal breach birth? What are the complications and aftercare? And you are going to answer her concerns from time to time, check, checking her understanding, inviting questions, and ask her to repeat the uh, information which you have given to her and ask her to, to stop her or repeat the things which she don't understand. So this is going to be an excellent teaching station. If you involve her in the teaching session and check her communication, communication from time to time. So let's start the applied clinical knowledge. So you are going to provide information into chunks and then uh, check understanding from time to time, invite question. Do you understand? Use props, a mannequin in face to face. Ask training to repeat steps. Boost her confidence, provide her with videos and teaching aids. Be friendly, encouraging, non gentlemanly approach. At the end of the session, get feedback of teaching and tell her to see more cases of a general reach birth along with you and other seniors. So, this way, you are going to involve your junior. And she would like your teaching style and she will recommend for you. You will have put for you and she will come back to you for if you want to learn more. So you're going to define and you're going to check the uh, background knowledge of the trainee by brainstorming. You can ask her, did she have any background knowledge of breach? What is a breach? What are the types of breach? And what are the indications? What are the risk factors and all the things? If she has got a background breach uh, knowledge, she's going to share it with you and you're going to appreciate her knowledge. Uh, let's go through the applied clinical knowledge as well as the safety points and the communication side by side. So you're going to discuss the breach presentation is the presentation in which the fetus is in the longitudinal lie and its buttocks is the lowermost part. So what are the types of incidents and types of the breach? As you know, all that uh, the incidences are given at 28 weeks, 525%, at term to 3%, and one third of the breach, they are undiagnosed and labeled. So you are going to classify frank breach, complete breach, incomplete breach. So let me show you another uh, presentation which is given by the RCOG. This is frank or extended breach. The incidence is 65 to 70%. That is the most common one. Complete or flex breach, 30%, and the footling breach, 10%. So you know the positions and how the baby presents. So what are the attitudes of flexion and extension? For the frank extended, legs are flexed at the hips and extended at the knees. Presenting part is a buttock. Complete or flex breach, hips and knees are both flexed. Presenting part, buttocks and feet. Footling breach, one or both feet or knees present below the fetal buttocks and the presenting part will be a foot. So the, the presenting part on the baby's attitude can be 
standing bridge, bridge presenting the kneeling position, and the footling bridge. So what are the risk factors for beach presentation? Nulliparity, Caucasian ethnicity, congenital uterine malformations, multifibrate uterus, raised BMI, oligohydramnios, polyhydramnios, small for gestational age, as well as a very important one, prematurity. So let me go through the more elaborated predisposing factors as well as the risk factors for persistent breach presentation by the RCOG. Predisposing factors can be if there is a previous history of breach delivery, which the patient she has seen in the yesterday does as a previous breach delivery. Um, extremes of uh, like I have already told you, oligo and poly, uterine relaxation to the multiparity, multiple pregnancies, fetal anomalies can as well present with the breach presentation like an encephaly, hydrocephaly. If there is a pelvic mass, which is Obstructing the patient, the baby's descent, and as well the presenting part to be engaged, that causes the abnormal presentation. Uterine abnormalities present to previa and chromosomal anomalies up to 1%. But the persistent uh, breach risk factors, like uh, they are maternal and fetal conditions, multiparity, most of the things they are, they are the same one, the fibroids, previous breach, percent of previa, and the CPT. But the fetal conditions, as I've told you, one of the very important factors, preterm delivery, poly, like oligo, fetal macrosomia, multiple pregnancy, and fetal anomalies. So this is a repetition, but it's, uh, it's an important uh, uh, chart by the RCOG. You should know this very well. And when you are going to this information, you are going to ask your junior to repeat some of the risk factors with you, and you can ask her to, do, uh, to uh, repeat those and tell what she understands from the uh, risk factor. So in this way, you are going to confirm with, that she knows and she has understood. So what are the options for the breach, term breach part? When a patient comes into labor and if it's an indicator that the patient is in the early labor, and if it's the breach is not engaged and the uh, pelvis is adequate, and you have done the ultrasound, you have seen the liker, the fetal weight, and the as well as the placenta, then uh, the options which you can be discussing with the patient uh, that can be external cephalic version, physiological breech birth, assisted breech birth, and cesarean section. In the new talk 2033, there is the term which you come across the breech clinic. So uh, they have been the UK, they have formed the uh, proper breech birth network and that includes the breech clinic. So in which a patient who is being identified as a persistent breech, they are going to be discussed at the breach clinics and they have specified a day which are the Monday afternoons for these patients so that they can come and discuss about the management options and the planning of their deliveries. So you can see uh, it, for each hospital, each unit, there will be a designated person who is going to be responsible for the operation of this breach birth and as well as the management of those uh, pregnant mothers. So it's don't it's not a universal one. For every hospital, there will be a different email on different person, or they can have see they have dedicated uh, by name the persons to whom they should be contacted. Just to give you an example, if the patient is diagnosed in 34 to 39 weeks of gestation, then the uh, unit or the maternity unit or the midwife or the uh, consultant lady, you know, anywhere where the patient is being seen, they are going to email to this concerned dedicated person at the breach clinics. And so that clin that email will be monitored by the dedicated by name persons who are going to take care of that. So the mother will be contacted via telephonic within 24 hours. They will be sending a breach option information leaflet by email they are going to reach ECV, an appointment were given for the next breach clinic, that is the Monday afternoon, so that they can discuss with the patient what are the options available and how to take care of her from 34 to 39 weeks onward. However, if a patient is diagnosed at the ultrasound, because one third of the patient can come to you on undiagnosed, as more than 40 weeks have been passed, so there should be uh, a call, not an email, there should be a call to the concerned breach clinic immediately. And you have to inform and you have to arrange an appointment as soon as possible. So at, along with that, you are going to discuss the uh, within the information, which are the written information as well as the ECV to be arranged. And obviously after discussing and taking consent from the patient. So in this way, 
uh, how the breach clinic works. So there's a dedicated breach clinics network as well. So I want you to know that because it's a new information which is being given in the talk 2033. So when you're discussing with your trainee about the external Kabbalic version, you are going to tell her that the, according to the Green Tap guidelines and as well the recommendation of the RCOG, Women with breach presentation at term should be offered external cephalic version unless there is an absolute contraindication. Successful ECV reduces the chances of the infection. So this is the talk 2033. So you are going to discuss your training, what are the factors which are influencing the success of external cephalic version as well as decreasing the success. As I've told you, if a patient comes in advanced labor and she has a previous history of vaginal breech birth, she can go for the, and she is willing for the another breech birth, you can going to take the consent, you can going to take her through the procedure by uh, for, for all the procedure and you are going to let the arrangement of the skilled trainer to conduct the vaginal breech birth and you have to discuss whether she wants to go for the physiological one and you have to tell the assistive vaginal, uh, vaginal breech birth options as well because there are any times when the need arises that she, she will be in the skilled hands and there will be assistance provided to her. So you are going to tell to the your junior what is ECV, how you are going to offer her that's the turning a breech baby to cephalic by manipulating of the abdominal abnormal. It's often presented first line management for breech presentation at term because it attempts significantly to increase the risklyhood of a vaginal birth. It's cost effective, it complete, and it's 50% successful. It is acceptable to most of the women. So you can see there is a algorithm uh, which is being developed for the ECB. <laughs> and they should be uh, women uh, who are going to be uh, with the ECB, they should be insured about the risk of uh, the both maternal and fetus. They are low, and with no repeated increase in the rates of low APCAR score low umbilical vein pH, submission to the neonatal unit, or perinatal death among expect, exposed fetuses. And you will going to tell her there will be a mild degree of maternal discomfort, but this is the procedure is well tolerated. And you are going to do the maternal and fetal monitoring before the procedure and afterwards as well. So there is uh, uh, the risk of going for emergency cesarean section within 24 hours while falling ECV is low. So current UK practice is, is to offer ECV from 36 weeks of gestation in primary gravida and from 37 weeks of gestation in multigravida. However, if a patient comes into early labor and the beach is un, uh, non, it's non-engaged and you have ruled out all the contraindications and the it's uh, it's non-engaged, like it is adequate, and the patient is having mild contractions and you have the skill trainer available with you and the patient is uh, uh, willing for that. So then you are going to offer the ECV in patient in labor, but not in advanced labor, only in early labor. If all the favorable factors are there, but very important is this thing that you have to involve your seniors. You have to call for help. You have to tell your consultant because this is a procedure which, which will be done by the senior persons, not by you. So they should be always, always, when you are teaching to your junior, you have to tell your junior what are her limitations, what are the limitations of ST5, and what are the things which are being done by the consultant and the senior's help. And whenever there's a need arises, you should know when to call and whom to call. This is a very much important top aspect of the teaching. As you can see, the factors increasing success of ECV, as I've already told you, there's an experienced skilled operator, multi-parity, and uh, Increase maternal age, non engagement of the pre, pre procedure to colysis, low maternal uh, BMI, procedure percent of flex, complete breach AM, FI more than 10. So, what are the facts of which you decrease? Nulliparity, maternal obesity, extended breach, footling breach. We are going to tell her the extended cephalic version is done to convert a transverse lie or bleak lie or a breach presentation into a cephalic presentation by abdominal manipulation. So what are the prerequisites? This is the question which can be asked and you are going to check with your training. So do you know what are the things which are important before attempting an ECV? What are the prerequisites? So you can see at least the gestation more than 36 weeks. There should be ultrasound to confirm breach and like and rule out 
contraindication. CTG pre and post is severe. Facilities to perform emergency season section, there's only 0.5%, but there should be uh, emergency protocols there available. So whenever need arises, you should be in a place where everything is available, neonatologist, theater, and then you can go for the emergency section if there is any need. Informed consent for the procedure and possible cesarean section should be informed the um, mother first, tell her about the pros and cons and also for the availability of the cesarean section. Uh, patient fasting more than six hours and NTD for an RH negative mother. Uh, it's, uh, it's a protocol that like for the, if the patient goes for the emergency, it's better that the patient should be kept uh, for on the, on, on only on the liquid, as you know, that the extended uh, recovery, sorry, the recovery uh, uh, enhancement uh, pathway shade, the rapid recovery pathway say that only the patient can have the liquids prior. So it's better that the patient should be NPO, but if the patient has come into your labor and she has eaten something, then obviously anything which you are going to discuss, anything which you are going to do, that will be after informing your colleague and that should be by your senior persons. So you can see this is the procedure by this, the xenocephalic version is uh, being the poles are identified and the patient is uh, uh, patient lie down on the supine position. So, and the, by use of the hands in the clockwise pattern, the baby's lower pole and upper pole, so they are being, uh, you know, uh, rotated till you get the head down position. And you are going to confirm this head down position by ultrasound as well as the abdominal palpation. So, uh, there are relative and absolutely good endocondications to PCV, which is the recent dog, and you can see maternal and fetal. So, anomalies. Uh, preeclampsia, hypertension, there's, if there is any history of bleeding prior, history of abruption, cardiac disease, obesity, previous section, you are not going to attempt the ECV because there can be some absolute and some dilatative contraindications as well. Fetal, oligohymetriominous, growth restriction, ruptured membranes, abnormal CTG, major congenital anomaly, hyperextension of the neck, macrosomia, more than 4 kg, and restrict buccal cars. So on all these conditions, you should tell your junior that these are the risk factors and these are the contraindications to perform extended phallic version and you are not going to do that when the things happen. So after uh, explaining to that, uh, the junior can ask you what are the alternative, the ECV, if the patient uh, declined ECV, but it's not for the patient in advanced labor, it's for the patient who have come to in, from 32 to 35 weeks and there's a persistent breach, you can offer the moxibustion. What is moxibustion? Moxibustion is ancient Chinese therapy involving burning dried mugwort at a specific acupuncture point on the tip of the fifth toe with the dermatome and blood innovation 67. It's say hypothesized that this encourages the release of the placental estrogens and prostaglandins, which causes stimulation and uterine activity, and as well as the fetal activity. However, this the uh, it uh, there is there is some uh, clinical trials which show that it is uh, it do reduces the non vertex presentation need for oxytocin and birth by cesarean section when moxibustion is combined with other techniques including acupuncture and postural management. And RCOD support the use of moxibustion between thirty three and thirty five of gestation. So this is the uh, moxibustion chart, and you can see how to do the moxibustion to turn a breach. And you can go through that and you can read it. There's a two parts, the, the other one, the half is here. So you can go through all this. So now uh, they can be questioned and you can tell there's a term breach trial which says that the strain section is more safer for the uh, breach penetration, especially in the primary gravida and they favor the because cesarean section is good for the baby if the baby is in breach uh, rather than, but it's not good for mother, but it favors the, it reduces the perinatal mortality. So um, it's a term breach trial. So uh, it's so, um, uh, they say that uh, the absolute risk for emergency cesarean section in the 24 hours following is very low. So before doing this, uh, uh, you have to do the presentation of uh, confirmation of presentation <clears throat> by ultrasound immediately before surgery should be taken as spontaneous reversion to cephalic occurs in around 8% of cases. 
Only three to seven percent of the ECB has been attempted and successful. The rate of version to P breach following successful ECB are similarly three percent. So term breach trial, uh, you should know the word because it's a buzzword and whenever need arises, even in the structural discussion, you should know that because it's so very much liked by the RCOG. So uh, what are the differences uh, in the TOG article as well as in the RCOG guidelines that for the ECV, a total of four attempts at version within a 10 minutes period should be considered the upper limit and where a trainee is performing the procedure under supervision Later attempts may not be conduct may be conducted by a more experienced operator. While the RCOG said that no more than four attempts are advised for a suggested maximum of 10 minutes. Electron of fetal monitoring prior to the attempt is fine. ECB should be performed with facilities ultrasound. Electron fetal monitoring and surgical delivery are available. <laughs> However, fasting administration of aesthetic pre-medication for insertion of intravenous excess, unless there's photocolysis, they are not indicated. <clears throat> now the comes come the uh, the comparison comes after the ECB. What are the other things we have the vaginal breach, but as well as the serine section, and the oral college says, and you are going to teach your trainee that when you are going to do the counseling for the after the ECB, patient uh, refuses ECB and she wants to go for the vaginal breach birth, and you have the option to discuss the, the uh, options between vaginal breach birth and the serine section. So what are the things you are going to keep in your mind? You are going to see what are the women's wishes, what she wished for, whether she wants to go for the vaginal beach bath or she wants to go for the serine section. Then you are going to discuss the options. You are going to enumerate the options, one, two, three, four, in front of the women, and you will going to ask her, so is there any specific option? You will be much more interested, so I can discuss about that. So you are going to consider all of the favorable factors for the vaginal beach birth, and you are going to consider current evidence and guidelines. And you have to document a discussion plan. This is very much important that you are going to document each and everything conversation which occurs between you and the mother so that it remains a part of the women notes and it will be uh, solving a lot of litigation issues and you will be considered as a safe doctor because it's a very much important safety point that you should document. You should act according to the patient's wishes. You are going to uh, give her proper information. Uh, which are the considered evidence and guidelines, and you're going to document that. This is a very much important safety point for your uh, safety as well. You are going to see uh, with the vaginal beach birth, what are the uh, criteria and indications. So if the vaginal beach birth patient can go for, if she has got a previous vaginal beach birth and the pelvis is adequate and uh, you have ruled out that the patient, uh, sorry, uh, fetal weight is between 3.5, 3 kg. If more than 3.8, that it's not good for the vaginal beach birth, cervix soft and effaced, adequate maternal pelvis, no high-risk pregnancy, malformed fetus or dead fetus. Even on those fetuses, vaginal beach birth is favored. So there's no use of have offering a dead baby to patient after having a high risk surgery. So serine section are primary gravida with breach. This is the breach term trial um, birth, uh, which is called the GTP. Premature birth, you are going to offer serine section, big babies, like unfavorable in adequate pelvis, high risk pregnancy, bad obstetrical history, LD primary gravida. Early rupture of membranes, breach associated with IUGR and foot link breach. These are all indications for cesarean section. So the types of vaginal breach delivery, which you are going to tell to your trainee are spontaneous breach, which is called physiological breach as well. You are going, it's a no touch technique and you are not going to do any traction, any manipulation. Sister breach birdly, the infant is allowed to deliver spontaneously up to the umbilicus. Then numerous are initiated to assist the delivery of the remainder of parts of the baby, arms and heart, head, so arms and head. So you can uh, opt for the pinard maneuver, love sits and Mauricio smelly maneuvers to deliver the baby's head if need arises. And there is a term which is called breach extraction. Also. Fetal feet are grabs and the entire feet is extracted and it's only, only practice for the second twin. What are the favorable factors for vaginal breach delivery? So uh, you have going to see uh, the favorable factors, uh, that is the maternal, fetal, institutional factors, maternal multiparity, 
educate pelvis, no previous LCS or uterine scar, then preference for vaginal birth. That is, the mother wishes to go for the vaginal birth and she knows the pros and cons and she has been properly informed and there's informed choices there and you have documented it. Fetal, frank or complete, please, no hypertension of the fetal head, no placenta, insufficiency of fetal growth restriction, a fetal estimated weight is less than 3.8. Institutional. There should be continuous CTG monitoring availability there. So then you can go for the general breach birth and there will be skilled practitioners who have conducted and know how to conduct and how to deal with the complications. And there should be accessories and access to cesarean section. If need arises, it should be available. So it should be a consultant-led clinic. So where all the things are available, only this is the place we are going to offer the vaginal breach delivery. So before doing that, it's very much important you are going to tell to your trainee that we are going to do appropriate case selection. Healthy, normally grown feet, feeders in frank and complete breach with flexed head. It's going to lead to successful vaginal breach delivery with no adverse outcomes. There should be skilled practitioner, which is going to adhere to strict protocols, and there should be teamwork and effective communication, because teamwork and effective communication is a very much important part of the vaginal breach birth, or rather in any uh, birth which is difficult, either with as come as a shoulder dystocia, uh, for, for the excessive like or anything. So you there should be teamwork and effective communication. So And there is a committed mother as well, Mother is filling, she is informed, and she has consented for that. So uh, there are some additional risk factors, as I've already told you. These are the same one that the capital extension, weight, uh, as well as the IUGR footling. So there's a term which is given by in the physiological breach birth, which is given in the talk, and they can ask you, and the trainee can ask you what is a physiological breach birth. So the, in the recent years, terms, trends around, around vaginal breech birth have moved from the historical norm of dorsal lithotomy to so-called physiological breech birth using upright position. Upright breech birth is associated with a significant reduce for maneuvers, unilateral brain injury, and shortening of the second stage, but over 40% at traditional supine position. So the birth, which is the physiological, and it is upright position that is called a physiological breech birth. So it reduces the perinatal injury, perineal injury as well. So you, uh, this is the uh, talk uh, uh, article, which is the, uh, uh, it says that the physiological breach part describes an approach to vaginal breach centered on the optimization and restoration of the normal physical process intervention if required, if required, is performed in response to specific clinic indication, which is termed based on evidence of what is considered normal breach birth physiology. In supporting physiological breach birth, should be recognized that while traditional teaching on the subject emphasizes the importance of maintaining sacro anterior position throughout, it is in fact normal for birth of the vital pelvis to occur in the transverse oblique plane and subsequently rotate. So uh, this is the, I'm going to teach you what are the important things. It is associated with reduce, significantly reduced need for maneuvers, neonatal brain injury, and shortening the second stage. Uh, most birds affecting uh, face with general beach were unfamiliar with this approach, largely because most teaching on the subject involved demonstration rehearsal of maneuvers in the dorsal position. So uh, the maneuvers and all the things which we are uh, using and doing is in the dorsal position, but this is the upright position. So this needs more training and a sort of maneuvers as well as the skills. It is the, uh, uh, let me go take you through the, how the breach birth is done. So if the Gina, uh, you are going to teach her, well, if it's, you are going to the mannequin, if the examiner asks you, uh, what is this, uh, how it's going to deliver, then you, you should know the movements, you should know as in the labor, the catch engagement is going to be done. That's the pyotrochantric diameter is going to be engaged. There will be descent of the breach, in usually interior hip, it descends more rapidly. Then there's internal rotation uh, with the 45 degree uh, with the pelvic flow. So interior hip towards the pubic arch. After the internal rotation, there'll be flexion of the fetal body. The posterior hip is forced over the premium. 
Then there is external rotation, slight external rotation of the birth of the breach. The back turns interiorly as the shoulders are brought into relation with one of the oblique diameters of the pelvis. And last of all, there is expulsion. So I have added this that if they ask you to show you on the mannequin, then you should know the movements which are the mechanism of the breech bar. And even the you can going to teach your trainee, you can tell her in small sentences that these are the engagement, internal rotation, external rotation, flexion. So you should know the sequence. And this is the uh, picture from the Royal College of Midwifery, and they have used the term, which is the term to bump. Term to bump means this is the simplest way for teaching this aspect of mechanism. Uh, uh, from the which is one of the midwives in the Royal College of Midwifery, they have using this term. The baby should rotate thumb to bum. In other words, the baby's tummy, stomach or front torso should be facing the mother's bum, bottom posterior, no matter what position the mother is in. So you should remember this term, thumb to bum. <laughs> So these are the steps of physiological breech birth. So as I've already told you the mechanism, so this is one of the flow chart as, as it says that how the baby is uh, doing coming in the physiological breech birth, it's a no touch technique, upright position. So the baby will uh, escape this calm. It will come in the, in the torso, uh, hips will emerge, the legs are released spontaneously, chest and release, arms not trapped, tummy, uh, flexed head and bring arms down. So uh, remains partial rotation. So, so tummy or uh, legs, you don't, there, there is some deviation. There are some possible causes. If in the, this is the physiological method sometimes. So uh, these are the reasons. So why the deviation occurs from the physiological reason. Sometimes the uh, it, it, there's no proper descent. Some there is asymmetry. Sometimes the legs are not released. So these are the possible causes which are given the, why the things happen. They can be no columns, they can be obstruction, head extended, and they can be uh, uh, poor fetal condition. So these are the some exceptions which can happen. But this is the normal physical, logical breath, uh, breach birth. As you can see in the pictures as well, uh, it's, uh, it's the mechanism uh, which is given. So these are the furthermore stem, uh, steps you are just going to hold. You are just going to support the coming baby. You are not going to do any of the maneuvers. You are not going to do any sort of extraction. So this is called a physiological breach birth until unless there is need arises. So only uh, you are going to support. Like you can see the arms are released spontaneously. Then the head is coming spontaneously. Head releases spontaneously. Baby then pause to the mother or intact during the suscitation. So uh, sometimes the exceptions and the deviation which are given, that is the flow chart. Thing to given. So what is the interpartum management of the breach when you are going to deliver? So it should take place in hospital with facilities for emergency section. Access the most experienced clinician early. You have to inform your seniors, your colleagues, and whosoever is expert and your consultant as well, so they can arrange for the expert to attend the delivery. There should be continuous fetal monitoring, uh, should be offered to all women with the breech presentation, fetal blood sampling from the bucket tuck is not advised. So this is another safety point. These are all safety points plus your applied clinical knowledge. So you have to merge all these things and you should know uh, what to say and when to say. I'm giving you a lot of information that you have to squeeze out what is required according to the station and your time management. So in the interpartum management of breech delivery, you are going to see the maternal position, uh, semi-recumbent on all four position is adopted as per the experience of the practitioner, that is the old 2017 uh, guideline. <laughs> Applied maternal position, eight descent. So this is the physiological breach birth. So uh, in which you are going to uh, offer the upright position. So women should be have a choice of energies and labor. Epidural should not be routinely advised. So there's no sufficient evidence. It should not be routinely advised until, unless mother asks for there is some indication. So then section should be considered if there is a delay in the progress or descent of the breach at any time in the first and second stage of labor 
you are not going to offer any induction only you can do augmentation in consultation with the consultant when you see there is bad effort maternal effort uterine contractions are not proper then only only after having a discussion with your senior and the colleagues and the consultant then you can offer the augmentation only if if the consultant <clears throat> Uh, uh, allows you. Otherwise, so the infection is the best modality if you see that there's poor maternal effort and the there is uh, the descent is not proper. Second phase management, uh, delay effective active pushing until the breach has descended to the pelvic floor. Episiotomy should be performed when indicated, not routinely when indicated. While handling the breach or the umbilical cord that can cause the uh, spasm in the cord and it can uh, disturb the acid base balance of the baby and we can get got acidosis as well. So you have to keep the warm uh, gauzes over there and you will avoid the cold touching and as well as the you have to protect the cord as well. It should not be routinely you would reach extraction. It causes extension of the arms and the head. So it should be hand off technique. This is all from the RCOG. This is the physiological breach algorithm. You can go through that. It has the new dot 2033. That is the term tuba met nipple line. And you know all the things which are given. How you are going to look for the, this is all physiological. How the, uh, uh, everything is done um, spontaneously. But as you can see, I have already shown you if there are exceptions and you need to, Manipulation is all given over there. You can go for that. So uh, there's a difference between TOG and uh, guide, uh, guideline regarding the intervention, which I want you to remember because your trainee can ask, or even the uh, examiner can ask you. A delay of 90 seconds or more at any stage following birth of the fetal pelvis is likely to require intervention. This is given in the new TOG. There's a more cautious approach is required in sporting vaginal breach birth using physiological principles. While the guideline says intervention either where there is evidence of poor fetal condition, there is a delay of more than five minutes from delivery of the buttocks to the head or of more than three minutes from the umbilicus to the head. This is all about the normal physiological part. So we will see what are the complications afterwards. So let me take you through the maneuvers which we might need for the assisted breech part. In the uh, upright physiological breech part, sometimes it so happens that there's some deviations, some reasons like I've shown you, if there are knuckle arms, there is head entrapment and there are extended arms. So you might need to do some maneuver that will be called of assisted vaginal breech birth and you can see. So the maneuvers which are being given in the dog as well. So there'll be shoulder press, pressure just below the fetal uh, clavicle to move the shoulder girdle back between the mother legs. to so flex after coming head in the mat pelvis or outlet if there's any uh, head entrapment or is any obstruction. Sweeping down fetal arms, that is another maneuver. Manually stretching the maternal premium to make it more roomy and uh, emerge the fetal parts. Sometimes you might need a fundal pressure on the abdominal abdomen. I can uh, I will show the uh, maneuver next. <laughs> and you have to lift the buttocks as well to assist shoulder pressing. Lifting maternal pec, uh, buttocks up towards the sacrum, sweeping the premium over the fetal head that can help you and assist in the uh, delivery of the obstruction and rule and to uh, cover up the obstruction as well. Then they are modified very smelly V uh, or um, maneuver and you are going the uh, flexing the fetal head by elevating the occiput and downward pressure on the maxilla. That is the mechanism. As well as rotational maneuver to release and entrap fetal arm, elevate and rotate fetal head to assist engagement in the maternal pelvis, elevating the fetal head to the occiput to raise it off the pelvic inlet or maternal Manual rotation of the occiput oblique tonsils assist the head to engage. Then conversion into supine maternal position. If the in the in the physiological breach birth, any time you think that you need the maneuvers, you have to uh, convert this uh, upright position into supine maternal position to apply for the maneuver. It's not possible that you can do these maneuvers in the upright position. 
Handing over to a more experienced, experienced professional scoop and flex, internal flexion of the fetal head by sweeping one head over the parietal bone and pressing down on the forehead, sense support, and there can be need of episiotomy as well to make it more roomy when you are doing the maneuvers. So uh, this is the love set maneuver, and they can show you some pictures and they can ask you in which you are going to rotate the uh, baby to 180 degree and clockwise and clockwise to release the interior posterior arms. And you can see it should only when the inferior angle of the scapula is visible underneath the pubic arch. This is a safety point. You should know that. The baby is grabs using both hands by femoral uh, pelvic grip, keeping the thumbs parallel to the vertebral column. And you can see this is the first picture and you can see the second picture and you can see the third picture. The baby is lifted up slightly to cause lateral flexion. The trunk is rotated to 180 degree, keeping the back interior and maintaining dormant traction. The secret is that you have to keep the baby, baby back interior all the time. This will bring posterior arm to emerge under the pubic arch, which is then hooked up. Turn is then rotated in the reverse direction, keeping the back interior to deliver the interior shoulder under the pubic. This is for the stuck shoulders. And when the baby has delivered till the uh, um, like us, and you can see the nape of the neck, but the uh, arms are stuck, then you are going to use the loft set maneuver. For the after coming head, you have the different maneuver, then it's the Morris's millet, there's the frontal pressure, as well as you can use the forceps. The Morris's millet maneuver, you can see the A picture, B picture, and C picture, and you can see uh, with your, you are using your both hands with the non dominating hand, you are going to hold and support the baby and the dominant hand. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, one of the hand is non dominant, you are going to support the baby and you are going to uh, you use your fingers to press the on the malar eminence and as well as the chin of the baby to give uh, uh, the flexion of the fetal head. And in this way, you are going to uh, bring out the baby in an arch, in a in sort of arch. So this is the normal physiological way how you are going to rotate and bring the baby down. So uh, you can see delivery of the after coming head using the maestro maneuver blade. Now the fetal head is being delivered. Flexion of the head is maintained by suprapubic pressure, provided by an assistant and simultaneously by pressure on the maxilla on the posterior of the protein is applying traction. So in the both ways, either you can use your both hands or you can ask one of the assistant as well to give some sort of pressure on the suprapubic region so that it will aid, it will help in the extended head to become flexed and it will help you in applying this maneuver and the delivery. Remember this, the safety point in this that do not insert the finger into the mouth of the baby. It will cause a dislocation of the jaw as well as don't do any extra sort of traction. It should be along the axis of the um, internal pelvis and the baby and don't do any sort of uh, excessive lateral tractions and you should be experienced and uh, trained and don't do use unnecessary force to because it's going to damage the the, the plexus as well the neck muscles it's going to damage the shoulder as well as the clavicle and the baby's head they can be um, uh, encephalopathies and ischemic injuries as well so you should know when you are doing this and i'm not asking you to do that but you should, they're going to tell you a treat training that it should be by the experts who know the maneuvers so there's a burn martial maneuver as well and there's a fundal pressure which is being applied to the fetal head that against the nape of the neck that causes the flexion and the release of the baby's head. The burn martial uh, procedure, as you can, you can see that the uh, in this, the baby is allowed to hang until you can see the hair at the back of the neck. Then you are going to hold the feet of the baby and you free his mouth and suck him out and then swing his head clearly. So this is the burn martial method. It's an, another maneuver for the baby. And last of all, there is the forceps for the after coming head and the, the forceps which are being used. These are the key line and piper's force. The question can come to you, uh, what are the difference between two forceps? And you should know that the key line forceps has a small pelvic curve and a sliding lock, suitable for head with little bit molding. It's more commonly used for rotational deliveries and it needs correct incentralism as well. And the pipers, this is a long curve, so that it allows the application of the after coming head of the breach and delivery. However, Kilian can also be used, but the best one is the piper concept. So this is the maneuver which is being shown to you.
Now, uh, uh, with the channel breach, but if excessive traction is applied and you can see the birth injuries from mismatch breach presentation can cause trauma, brain bleeds, oxygen deprivation, hypoxic, ischemic, and caplopathy, seizures, and cerebral palsy. I'm going to give you the more details afterwards. Now, we little, let talk a little bit about the cesarean section. The patient opts for the cesarean section. You are going to teach you the training that you're going to discuss with the cesarean section, with the term breach trial. There's a section with the safest option. Uh, it has to complication and side effects for the mother and a little bit for the baby, but it's more safer for the baby rather than a vaginal breach birth. So while most breach delivery is a cesarean section, a straightforward additional steps may be required in some cases and largely mimic those delivered by uh, sometimes even for the cesarean section, you have to do some maneuvers to release the, uh, you know, the bring down the shoulders as well as the legs and the after coming head of the baby. Sometimes even with the cesarean section, you have to use the uh, uh, five forceps as well to deliver the after coming head. Awareness of hyperextension of the neck and under pressure on the thorax abdominal similarly recommended for the safe cesarean section breech birth. So risk associated with the cesarean section that can be maternal as well as the baby. For the baby, I'm going to discuss the specific uh, risk factors uh, or the complications further. For the mother, as you know, you are going to tell her that there can be risk of infections, bleeding and clots, bladder bowel injury. There can be amniotic fluid and rhythm and the reaction to the anesthesia as well. And there can be future need of cesarean section. The uh, next pregnancies, you train rupture can be there if... Uh, uh, in the next pregnancy, the patient has a section and she opts for the labor and there can be risk of that, placental problems, center previa and accreta, ectopic pregnancy can be there, stillbirth and preterm birth. So baby can have altered immune development, increased chances of developing allergies and asthma and reduced gut mechanism, microbiome uh, diversity by means of certain section. So uh, what are the neonatal complications of breach delivery? That is the... Uh, a, more elaborate information you are going to give your trainee and if you're going to discuss with the in the structure discussion as well if need arises uh, it's a i don't want you to learn and memorize all of that but uh, whatever you will read some of the things will retain your mind and they can help you in answering the questions delivery complications maternal external extended hysterectomy incision sometimes uh, though with the cesarean section you you have to uh, it so happens that sometimes you might land up into emergency cystectomy as well. And they can be vaginal cervical valve laceration, both in the vaginal cervical, uh, so, sorry, vaginal breech birth and as well as cesarean section. And deep prenatal tears with the vaginal breech birth, increased infections, anesthesia, uterine relaxation, PPH, atony. So all these things. And the neonatal complications, they can be interpartum death, asphyxia with the vaginal breech birth, hypoxic uh, Gaflopathy, intracranial hemorrhage, trauma to liver, kidney, or spleen, while you're doing the manipulation, traction, and the maneuvers, dislocation of the neck, shoulder, or hip, cord prolapse, occipital diastasis, and cerebral injury. These are all the things which can happen with the breach delivery. And specific fetal injuries, you can see the plexus injury, fracture of the bones, and the uh, version of the spinal spine, skull fractures, hematoma. All these things can happen and uh, sometimes it so happens that you have to do some additional emergency maneuvers to deliver the entrapped head. So these can be, as I've already told you, Mauricio's maneuver and then the Piper forceps, some cervical, uh, you have to apply gentle traction, slide a slide, a cervix over the occiput and you have to do the incision, which is called dorsal incision into the cervix. And there, the last is the Seminelli maneuver pushing fetal body back into the vagina and then to the section. And sometimes you have to do the symphysiotomy to deliver the baby. So all these are the emergency maneuvers. So I just want you to remember for the cervical incision or the thyrsin incisions, and this should be at 2, 6, and 10 o'clock position at cervix. So, and sometimes it so happens if there's a dead baby, then the craniotomy is done like the profession, but it's 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 a it's not uh, very much favorable, and it's not indicated nowadays. But in some of parts of the world, is practice. But as we are concerned with the UK practice, so it's not necessary to mention that. And you have to uh, tell your junior what are the post delivery uh, things which he uh, he or she should know that after the delivery, yeah. There should be presence of the, as you know, that the breach birth delivery, there'd be the proper team, pediatrician will be there. 
consultant as well as the specialized nurses and the neonatal uh, court availability and as well as the proper nursery care should be there. So when you are going to deliver the baby, you are going hand over to the baby, to the pediatrician, and they should be caught blood for blood cases uh, and immediately done. And there should be accurate documentation of each and every step, all the maneuvers which were being done when the, uh, sorry, when the uh, uh, shoulder emerged, when the head emerged, and what are the uh, time duration of each and every maneuver so that you can assess if there is any uh, ischemic injury to the baby. So because these are the legal points and these are the clinical awareness points with the trainee should know that the documentation of the events is very much important. And the parent should know that you uh, after the delivery, it, uh, there is debriefing of the parents as well as with staff. And if there is any incident uh, which is critical, then they should be like the like the five Ds which, which we discuss in the clinical governance aspect, that is the duty of condor, they text, deep briefing, documentation. So all the Ds should be in place and uh, it should be uh, when the need arises, the clinical goodness aspect should be fulfilled. So this is your job to teach your trainee what are the clinical goodness aspects which can come with that and the risk management team as a part of uh, if there are any such complication which leads to risk management that should be initiated as well. So when you are going to finish all your uh, this description and discussion with your training, you are going to confirm your junior and you are going to ask her all steps she has learned. And from time to time, you're going to check her understanding as I've already told you. You're going to get feedback how the teaching station went uh, today, whether how much you have learned and did you find it beneficial and what uh, what is uh, her opinion about your teaching as well clinical governance aspects and importance of documentation. And you should teach your trainee that the importance of call for help and whenever the need arises and you should know her limitations and as well as the uh, follow the documentation and the protocols. Uh, you uh, have to uh, offer the strategy or videos as well as the talk, ask your guidelines, show support for future as well and ask her if any query arises, if any need arises, she can come back and you can be more of any help. You will be happy and you will be more cooperative towards that. She will be more comfortable and she could have the uh, good understanding of the topic. She'll be confident and you can ask her that she can accompany the seniors and others. And if there is any breach birth in the uh, future and if there is any assisted breach birth, anything, you will invite her to come uh, back and and uh, company you so that you can have. So this is this ends the task and uh, in this way you are going to address your junior and you're going to him information. I have given you a lot of information because I want to complete all things which are related to breach birth and I want you to learn and to, in by heart. Uh, so it will help you Neil, if you come across any structured discussion in your teaching station, even in the simulated patient task, then you should know what are the things you can discuss. So this, uh, uh, the for the preparation of this uh, um, task, I took the references from the TOG year 2023, from the JP, from the RCOG, as well as your Royal College of Midwives and Science Direct. Thank you so much uh, uh, for bearing with me, and I hope uh, this presentation will help you. And uh, we are here, all of us, we are four mentors, Dr. Khalda Rahman, Dr. Ozia, Dr. Amreen Dohi and me, Dr. Huma Sheikh at the MRC Oski Prep. And we'll be helping you and preparing audios and videos for you. And from time to time, we are here to assist you and we wish you good luck. Thank you so much.